From physical to digital, here's how I created some custom parts with the new Moose 3D Scanner. Hello everyone and welcome! Today I'm going to be looking at the Moose 3D Scanner sent to me by 3D Maker Pro, a relatively lower cost scanner suggested for objects measuring about 15 to 1500 millimeters. Regular viewers of this channel will know just how useful these 3D scanners can be for creating custom parts. You may also recall that I reviewed a few scanners from 3D Maker Pro prior, those being the Lynx and the Mole. Both of those scanners were quite impressive and have been useful for a number of projects. So how does this Moose compare? Well, that's what I'm going to be finding out today. In this video, I'll be unboxing and going over some of the features of the Moose. Then of course, I'll be doing some test scans to see what kinds of results I can achieve while hopefully sharing some techniques for getting the most out of your 3D scanner. Finally, I'll be incorporating these 3D scans into some simple projects, showing how they can really come in handy when it comes to creating custom parts. So without any further introductions, let's get started. Now, as I said during those prior scanner reviews, I'm not really a 3D scanning expert. This is an RC channel, not a tech channel after all. Sure, I've used them for various projects, but I'm not overly familiar with the technology or hardware within the Moose. My perspective, as always, is from that of an RC enthusiast creating custom parts, whether that be scanning a body to create a form-fitting interior or body kit, or scan real-world objects to assist with creating a smaller scale version. With that said though, I want to get started by unboxing the scanner. Despite no carrying case like what was included with the Lynx and Mole prior, everything still comes nicely packed. In addition to the scanner itself, you of course have all of the necessary cables, as well as a turntable and tripod. Two versions of the Moose will be available, the Moose that you see here and the Moose Lite. The Lite version is apparently a more stripped down version of the Moose, sacrificing some features and quality in exchange for a lower price. I want to point out that I'm not sure exactly how the Moose Lite will compare to the Moose that I have here, since obviously I don't have a Moose Lite to compare it to. I would expect or at least hope that the results are comparable, but again I can only test this version of the Moose that I have here. The scanner is nice to hold and feels relatively well made with a metal outer case. Of course it can be screwed into the included tripod and remain stationary while the object moves and the data is captured by the scanner. Setting up the scanner is extremely simple. Plug in the power, plug in the USB, plug the other end into the scanner, and you're good to go. The included JM Studio software is the same software as was used for the prior 3D scanners I've reviewed from 3D Maker Pro. I will post links to those videos down below in the description if you'd like to check them out. I'm happy to see that it seems various improvements have been made over time to the software. Overall, it's simple to use and pretty intuitive. Boot it up, plug in your scanner, the software should automatically detect what you're using, and then you're good to go. While a bit of time may be required to learn the various features, if you're willing to read through the documentation provided and get familiar with the software, it can be pretty effective. There's essentially three different modes. Easy Scan is where you can hold the scanner and move it around the object, while Table Scan allows you to use the turntable. Edit Mode is where you can combine multiple scans, delete unnecessary sections, and eventually process your scans into a 3D mesh, which you can then export into your design software, or if it's a watertight mesh, you can send it to your slicing software for 3D printing. Just like with the Lynx and Mole prior, scanning with the Moose is very easy. You don't even need to be particularly careful if you're doing it freehand. If tracking is lost, the software generally does a great job of picking up where you left off once you reposition the scanner, and you can move the scanner pretty quickly and still capture the object well. There's a few settings that you can adjust, and you have the option of capturing just the geometry or capturing a texture as well. The ability to scan objects with color textures is pretty cool. Not really a feature I use for my projects, but here's an example of what it looks like. One thing to keep in mind is if you're having trouble with the tracking when you're scanning in geometry mode, you can try switching to texture mode and see if that helps. While markers are not necessary, if you're having trouble, doing something as simple as slapping on some masking tape can really help with the tracking. I scanned a variety of objects from bodies to random parts and accessories. Now you might notice that a lot of these objects aren't necessarily ideal for the scanner, either being quite small or having a mix of both light and dark colored sections. This was intentional, and I did absolutely no prep work to any of the items that you see here. I really wanted to try and find out what some of the limits of the scanner are, rather than just scan a bunch of larger, completely uniform matte finish objects, since I know it does a good job with those items.
3D scanning sprays are great, though a little expensive. Cheaper alternatives can also be used. As an example, I sprayed some water onto this FJ40's chassis, then blew some baking soda onto the wet surface to make it easier for the scanner to detect. Of course, this solution won't be ideal for all objects, but it worked well here. This scan will be useful for creating some custom inner fender pieces. Stay tuned to see that project in a future video. I also scanned a few other sections of the FJ40 to aid in creating some other custom parts, and again, I'm very pleased with the quality of each scan. While the Lynx is a great larger format scanner, for scanning objects as large as a car, it can't pick up some of the smaller, finer details like the Moose can. The Moose also seems to do a better job with parts that have both light and dark colors. 3D Maker Pro advertises the Moose as being a step above the mole. And while if you are a current mole owner, I'm not sure you necessarily need to run out and get a Moose right now, it does seem like the Moose is the superior scanner between the two, as you would hope being that the MSRP of the Moose is about the same as the Mole, and you would expect the newer version to be better than the prior. It can be kind of annoying to have to look at the computer screen while simultaneously looking at where you're pointing the scanner. Battery packs and the ability to use your phone as a screen are available on those prior 3D scanners. Hopefully similar accessories will be available for this Moose as well, otherwise you're always going to be tied to wall outlets and your computer. Here's a scan that I was impressed with. Even with darker colored objects such as this transmitter, it did a great job picking up some of the finer details such as the textured plastic that's on certain sections of this transmitter. I did absolutely zero prep work. I just placed it on the turntable and did a few scans with it in different orientations so every part of it could be scanned. I was able to export a nice watertight mesh straight from the JM Studio software. I loaded it into my CAD software just to make some parts like the Traeger a little larger and less likely to break while being 3D printed. I was able to print this smaller scale version that you see here. Now I have a small scale RC truck accessory for my RC truck. Yeah, I could have just designed the transmitter from scratch, but come on, this is pretty cool. After the 3D scanning process, the mesh can then be exported and loaded into your CAD software of choice. In this case, Autodesk Fusion 360. After scanning the inside of this FMS K5 Blazer body, I can easily create an interior piece that will fit well into the body, utilizing pre-existing mounting holes for the bed-mounted roll bar. Creating parts that will have a somewhat complex shape or need to fit tightly around a pre-existing object or line up with specific mounting points is when having a 3D scan mesh to work off of is really helpful and can save time by making the design process quicker and cut down on waste with less prototypes needing to be printed. Still though, sometimes some tweaks need to be made. For example, the scanner had a hard time picking up the body clips used for the wipers. If I had sprayed these body clips or in some way made them more visible to the scanner, this issue may not have occurred. However, after a little bit more refinement, the interior piece now fits great. The dimensional accuracy of the scan seemed to be spot on, but always double check to make sure that the dimensions you're seeing on your 3D scan match the actual dimensions of the object. Also remember that you can easily remove scan data within the JM Studio software, and you can also simplify the mesh so rendering it in your design software doesn't take as many resources. While a 3D scanner isn't necessarily a tool every RC or 3D printing enthusiast needs in their toolbox, it can be a phenomenal asset for many projects. Taking the little bit of time to scan an object before doing the design work can cut down on both time and waste. I was really impressed by not only the quality of the scans delivered by the Moose, but just how easy it was to set up and scan. Objects roughly the size of a 10 scale RC model seem to be really in the sweet spot, but certainly larger and smaller objects can be done as well. While not something I generally use, the ability to capture color textures is pretty cool and is not a feature found on every lower cost handheld 3D scanner. Do note though that the light version of the Moose does not seem to have the ability to capture color textures. If that feature is important to you, you will need to make sure that you get the more expensive version that I have here. As mentioned, while the Moose does seem to be a step above the Mole, if you already have a scanner like the Mole, I'm not sure you necessarily need to run out and pick this one up. But if you're new to the world of 3D scanning, the Moose seems to offer a lot of bang for the buck, and it can certainly deliver scans good enough for reverse engineering or creating form-fitting parts. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them below in the comments. If you'd like to learn more about the Moose or order one for yourself, I have included the links to the 3D Maker Pro website below in the description.
I want to thank 3D Maker Pro for sending the scanner for review, and of course I want to thank you all for watching.